Here are some terms uh, connected with phenotype and environment in evolutionary biology. So the first one is about extended phenotype. The term is introduced by Richard Dawkins. Uh, you know, what is that? As the name says, extended phenotype. So the phenotype, as we know, it's about our gross morphology and traits, isn't it? Uh, yeah. So like expression of the proteins and how the proteins and enzymes contribute to the development of the organs, all those things, right? Now, extension of that phenotype also include what we do with our body. For example, uh, the kind of construction that we make, for example, the nest of the bird. So, you know, so of course, the nest of the birds do contribute in its survival right so survival to reach its reproductive age and potentially for finding potential mates right mate right uh, so that that's why this uh, you know the the structures that we make with our own body are also important you know that they are also under the constraints of the natural selection you know so that that is why the the, the term extended phenotype is also all about so phenotype should not be limited to the biological processes such as protein synthesis or the tissue growth, but extended to include all effects that the gene has on the environment, inside or outside the body of the individual organism, so outside the body as well. For example, bird nest, uh, you know, of course, uh, it is not inside the birds, but still the genes do play the role in uh, how efficiently the bird is building its nest, you know. So which material do they use? All those things are in one sense coded in its gene, right? Or the dam that beavers make, right? The, the beaver, the rodent kind of animal, very famous that they, they build the dam for stopping the water. So recently only I come came to know that the beavers build the dam not for diverting the, the water or not like an, the way that irrigation engineers construct the dam, you know, uh, but they are kind of like they don't like the the sound of dripping sound of water uh, so that is the reason why they want to stop that water from flowing you know they don't like that sound that is the reason why they're building the dam very interesting right uh yes yeah, so this is the the beaver very interesting whether right? the creature beaver they just check out the, the kind of dams that the beaver is building you know so uh the animal's behavior tend to maximize the survival of the genes for that behavior. So whatever be the behavior, for example, the, the dam building of the beaver or the nest, you know, so nest of the birds. So whatever the behavior uh, that the animal is doing, so whatever genes contributing to that behavior, so if that behavior is being selected, genes are also automatically getting selected. So that is the idea of it. So whether or not the genes happen to be in the body of that particular animal performing it, you know, so I think there is a very, uh, you know, very unique way of thinking about adaptations and about uh, the, the selection of the different traits, you know. So the trait need not be in the body itself. So the, I think that's a very curiosity driven and very profound wisdom by the Richard Dawkins, you know, the extended phenotype. And a related term is called niche construction. So whatever we do with our body, can actually contribute in the environment and environmental niche, you know. So process by which an organism alters uh, its own or other species local environment, you know. So that is what you call it as uh, this particular niche construction. So by the way, what is niche or niche? So niche is uh, the way in which organism fits into an ecological community or an ecosystem. That is a formal definition of a niche, you know. So through the process of uh, natural selection or uh, you know so the drift so niche is basically the evolution result of the species morphological uh, you know so basically morphology means physical structure isn't it physiological or behavior adaptations to its surroundings that is what the organism how we are fitting inside the environment that is called the niche you know so we can alter the niche of our own environment or other species environment that is called niche construction you know so these alterations can be physical change the organism's environment or encompass when the organism actively moves from one habitat to another to experience different environment you know to in order to experience a different environment so you know this this can uh, the organisms can do it the niche construction you know so, of course, this is extended phenotype and ecosystem engineering. These two terms are very much related to the niche construction. 
and uh, yeah there is a uh, i think it's a it's a very important concept in evolutionary biology you can check out that the, there is a very interesting article on it about the brewing debate uh, you know the uh, evolutionary biologist from the jncsr is quite involved in this debate about the how important this niche construction is it, it is in the the hindu article check it out right so there are actually the, the four categories of the niche construction inceptive perturbation or inceptive relocation or counteractive perturbation or counteractive relocation so what are these terms indicate inceptive perturbation means organisms initiate the change in their selective environment by physically modifying their surrounding you know so basically we are actually doing they are initiating some changes right it's not simply uh, uh, you know uh, like second hand experience or doing nothing we are simply responding that is not the case that is why these are inceptive you are doing uh, you know you are taking initiative you know uh, or relocation is organisms expose themselves to a novel selective environment by moving on to the growing to a new place so you know the organism move on to a different place in order to expose themselves to a new selective environment right so both of these either relocation or perturbation both are inceptive now coming to counteractive so these are in response to something else so organisms counteract a prior change in the environment by physically modifying their surrounding uh, for example because of the mine waste uh, the grass living in the mine waste area is uh, changing its phenology that means the flowering times you know so that is that is an, an example of this counteractive perturbation a niche construction or now counteractive relocation is the organisms respond to the change in environment by moving to or growing on to a more suitable place simply immigrating to a, a better environment that is also uh, you know the, in which you, the organism is basically doing something in response to something else but inceptive means they are the initiators of the change so these are the four categories of the niche construction uh, and now there is another term called red queen hypothesis what is that so by the way red queen is a character in the fiction uh, by uh, the uh, probably as as child you might have read that lewis carroll book right through the looking glass that is a sequel to the alice's uh, adventures in wonderland right lewis carroll by the way it's a pen name of uh, charles ludwig du, you know uh, dot uh, dot gone dot gone right dachshund so her name is uh, dachshund yeah so uh, through the looking glass so the idea is that this red queen of that character so there is a you know the uh, the, the court in that book is that the red queen has to run faster and faster in order to keep still where she is that is exactly what you are all doing so this is a key message i think the red queen message is profound wisdom for all of us for you know that emphasizes the importance of uh, lifelong learning if you stop learning your diet right that is the quote by the einstein so we have to keep on learning new new things we have to keep on running to stay in the same place you know so that is that is a very interesting so that in that say, sense evolution also right species should keep on evolving keep on adapting and evolving just not for themselves but also to compete with other equally evolving species you know a competing organism because the other organisms that you know are also evolving so that is why you should also evolve faster so that that kind of idea is known as red queen hypothesis you know by accumulating changes right so another term here is called phenotypic plasticity so that means that ability of one genotype to produce more than one phenotype when exposed to different environments so same genotype or same like let's say that uh, you know the uh, homozygotic twins one grown in africa another grown in uh, scandinavia so the one grown in africa can have environmental uh, changes right the melanin expression will different right although these two are exactly same the genotypically the two are really same equal isn't it the homozygotic means the genome there is no difference at all that is called phenotypic plasticity it's very common in uh, stationary organism like plants for example algae you know so the same species of algae growing in two different environment one is uh, a sheltered environment where there is not much of the surf i uh, means the wave action is very very less versus the same algae same genotype 
gone in another environment where there is a lot of wave action or environment where there are no uh, herbivores you know uh, you know in comparison with the other area where a lot of herbivores like sea urchins you know or crabs so then both will have a different phenotype and also of course uh, microbiome of these algae or the seaweeds with the bacteria bacteria has morphogenetic inducers so some same bacteria you know so the bacteria can actually induce from one morphotype to another so all these are examples of phenotypic plasticity as you can see in this one if there is no plasticity so you know you can have the genotypes with the same thing you know with uh, even in the same changing environment there is no plasticity three genotypes have got three uh, different morpho morphological form right but if with a little bit of morpho mor you know uh, plasticity you can see that various environment the same trait can have various few uh, values of it you know not drastic changes little bit difference like height uh, of the plant can differ in a gradient right that is called normal plasticity but highly variable plasticity or strong genotype by environment interaction remember this term we introduced while we discussed about the variations right so this is how the trait can have huge variation uh, if you go from one environment to another environment you know so then comes another interesting uh, related term called evolutionary capacitance so you know cap uh, capacitors are basically the the, the uh, electronic instrument that you know store the charge in order to release the charge later on right capacitors are uh, found in most of the electronic circuitries right like capacitor radios you know? so like that like capacitors store the charge evolutionary capacitance is that you know it store and release the variance when it is needed the time is required you know, of course vari variance are really important uh, because that is the reason where natural selection is acting upon isn't it variance are produced by random mutations and are also the you know of course the reading errors of the dna polymerase enzyme isn't it so variance are important and the variance uh, the species are storing and to release when it's needed so variants are never actually getting disappeared though some variants are not getting expressed so it's a form of evolution robustness so robustness is uh, the idea of uh, uh, you know the ability of uh, a species to spring back when uh, the times are not in favor you know like in the times of population bottlenecks so the the, the species should uh, save right it shouldn't collapse isn't it so that is the term called evolutionary robustness so this is one of the way to achieve the robustness evolutionary capacitance uh, for example this is a wild type you see that accumulation of genetic variation several variations are being accumulated uh, mostly through uh, replication errors and uh, you know so that correction is also getting failed so but these are not getting expressed that is the idea right so these are all cryptic variants and now the switch of capacitance so all these variants get expressed when at the suitable time you know for example during the time of uh, calamities or during the time of uh, extreme predation you know so such variants get fully expressed uh, not cryptic at this time you know so this is known as evolutionary capacitance right uh, some of the examples would be chaperons like uh, heat shock protein hsps you know or uh, you know that enzyme promiscuity enzyme promis promiscuity means some uh, uh, you know it's a sexual term right multiple sexual partners that is a promiscuity enzyme promiscuity means the same enzyme that can catalyze uh, various uh, ligands you know so that is that is a, also an example of the evolutionary capacitance so another related term is called canalization so what is that canalization it's a measure of the ability of a population to produce same phenotype regardless of the variability of its environment or genotype so even if the environment is uh, varying you know the phenotype is same it's like just the opposite of the phenotypic plasticity you know so that is what the or even the capacitance is also very different right uh, canalization is like the opposite of it so the frequency see that the the relative deviation from the wild type is very less in the case of canalization as you can see that in this uh, the green color you know uh, this is a wild type and this is a green green color is a canalization now here capacitance is more variance 
you know but most of these variants are not expressed they are waiting for the suitable time to express right most most of these variants are cryptic right so in this in the case of canalization variants are less you know so phenotype is same right so it's a form again this is another form of the evolutionary robustness just like the case of capacitance or phenotypic plasticity